Welcome to this video discussion on media bias from the ECC Library. This video will teach you how to start thinking about and spotting media bias in sources. The first step to understanding anything is to define it, so we will define bias. We will also briefly discuss the political orientations that can often lead to intentionally and unintentionally bias. We're going to look at several examples of sources to identify where minimal or balanced bias is occurring and where if you know what to look for, significant bias is occurring. And as we look at bias, we're also going to look at the quality of reporting the news. When is a source delivering the facts or giving opinions? When is a source giving inaccurate or fabricated information? Let's get started. As our world grows more digital, the news is everywhere. It's constant, especially with 24-7 news services and social media. Especially with social media, everyone has the potential to become a reporter of sorts. We keep hearing these words thrown around. Bias, fake news, objectivity, the right, the left, and these others here. As more people feel more and more strongly about these topics, it's feeling like the clouds are gathering and a fierce storm is coming. How can we step back from the storm and more confidently and more realistically evaluate the news we are seeing? Attorney Vanessa Otero hopes to get us to slow down the storm by giving us an idea of where common news sources fall in two categories, partisan bias or political bias and overall quality, which has to do with how accurate and comprehensive a news source is. Otero explains how she evaluated these news sources at her website, but ultimately she emphasizes that it is her informed opinion based on her classifications that she encourages chart users to explore if and how they agree with her chart is a strength. You won't always have every news source on the chart to evaluate when you need it, and you also won't even always have access to this chart, so it's important that we talk about the how of evaluation. We're going to talk about political orientation on the x-axis, and then we will talk about the accuracy of reporting on the y-axis separately. Eventually, we will see how Otero classifies with both of these categories together to place sources in zones of use. The green zone, yellow, orange, and at the bottom, red. Green is higher quality and more reliable sources with minimal or absent bias, and as you travel down to the red zone, sources become more biased, more partisan, and have the greater likelihood to be misleading and inaccurate, if not completely false. Let's first discuss bias. Often, political orientation does affect our bias. It's important to keep in mind, everyone has bias as we are all human. Everyone from all over the world comes from all walks of life. Everyone has experiences that have moved them. Everyone has learned things that affect how they think and see things. And everyone has been influenced by at least one other person. In one of our databases, we have the Chambers Dictionary, and it defines bias as a one-sided inclination or a special influence that affects our thinking, or it can even be presented as an imbalance in how we think. We can be biased about trivial things, such as where do you go if you want the best Chicago-style hot dog in the area, or we can be biased about serious topics such as immigration, abortion, and any other topic that you can think of. Now let's discuss political orientation. What do we generally mean when we say liberal or conservative? Often, but not always, they tie in with being a Democrat or a Republican. Even that, though, can be very fluid and even change with the times. Studying political orientation would be its own deep study that you could go off on but for the purposes of this video, we're going to paint with a broad brush. From Auburn University, the main idea of conservatism is keeping things as they are, as what has been, is generally the best system that is possible. Alternatively, the main framework for liberalism, again from Auburn University, is acceptance for all people and giving government the responsibility and the mission to uplift marginalized groups. Again, these are very broad, very general, and very overarching ideas. 
and if you want to study more about political orientation, the ECC library has many resources for that. Here are some suggestions for finding more information on political orientation. As we think of sources and their objectivity, we want to take them in steps, literally. For the most neutral and objective viewpoint, it's best to stay higher, and the further toward the bottom a source falls on the stairs, the less and less you want to go down to it, if you even go at all. At the top is fact reporting. Think of news wires and the main news services. These sources get the facts out as soon as possible. After a story breaks, they don't make a point to judge, evaluate, or interpret the story. We'll talk about several characteristics soon for evaluating bias or interpretation, but one big indicator of neutral or balanced bias is in interviews. In fact, reporting both sides will be featured for an interview. The next step down on the chart is stories that go into deeper analysis and more complexity of the stories beyond the main facts. They also, at this step, can start to lean into interpretation of events, and that interpretation often comes from partisan bias. Down at the next step is grander scale interpretation. The story is incomplete and is one-sided. For instance, when it comes to interviews, these sources will often only interview one side of an issue or a story. Chances are the story as it's presented misleads in this case. At the bottom of the stairs is the worst of the worst. Stories are inaccurate, if not totally made up. Otero calls these damaging to the public discourse. For more information on media bias and journalistic objectivity, please see these suggested source suggestions and search terms. Now that we've talked about political bias and the quality of journalistic reporting, let's look at Otero's chart again, putting what we've learned together. If we were to look at PBS, which is here, we can see it's classified with minimal or balanced bias on the x-axis, so it's essentially neutral. And if we look over here at the journalism quality, it is classified with fact reporting, and this high quality, along with being neutral, keeps PBS here in the green zone. Now, let's look down at the Huffington Post. This skews liberal, so it hangs out here in the hyperpartisan liberal side. Then, because of the journalistic quality of the Huffington Post, which can be unfair persuasion, incomplete, or selective story, Otero classifies it here in the orange zone. And again, these sources in the orange and the red zones, we don't do ourselves a favor hanging out a lot in these areas of the chart where you have high partisan bias and then you also have lower journalistic qualities. Let's go into some specific story examples so you can start to look for and evaluate bias and journalistic quality as you go along in your life for both academic and non-academic reasons. Okay, now let's do some specific examples. This first one from PBS is from Otero's Green Zone. She classifies PBS under neutral and fact reporting. And we have a few screenshots of some of the story that's available here. If you want to see and read the full story, there is the link at the bottom. And if we look at the tone of this, it is informational. It's presenting information by the journalist. We don't know the journalist's opinion on sanctuary cities. We don't see any language, if we read here, that indicates value or judgment that the journalist is placing on the information. The other thing, if we go through this, that we see, this is a story about Trump trying to prevent sanctuary cities from happening. We see both sides interviewed and represented. We see all sides featured. So we have information from the judge who blocked Trump trying to block sanctuary cities. And we see a quotation from the San Francisco city attorney who 
presents his opinion as being four sanctuary cities and then below that we get into language from the department of justice and later a quote from a department of justice attorney about sanctuary cities and of course the department of justice would be arguing for the executive branch the trump administration on why sanctuary cities as an order is not something that could be done so we do see opinion in here and we do see people quoted but we see both sides presented of the issue and then most importantly we don't see the journalist's opinion we just see the journalist presenting information and where there's opinion it's both sides of opinion for it and here for this PBS story of why it gets classified in the green zone and if you're trying to consider is another source good for you to look at here are some of the factors again it presents information it's factual you don't see value laden language or judgment attached to the information and then multiple perspectives are interviewed in the story this next example is from the Federalist it is a conservative website Otero puts it in the orange zone and we're going to talk about how it gets there these are a few screenshots from the article if you want the full article you can go to this URL here the biggest thing about this piece is it goes beyond fact reporting into interpretation of facts and it really only presents one side in its interpretation if we look the most egregious thing we can start to determine from this as we read it is it's in a it's an opinion masked as a news story and where the subtle opinion is is where the word should is anytime you see the word should that is a value judgment that is a call to action you should do this you should think this and that is an indicator that some opinion or value is going on the other thing we see are the quotation marks in sanctuary cities in the title here and then referred to as sanctuary in quotation marks here and quotation marks can be snippets from interviews where people are being quoted in this case though it's generally indicating sarcasm or disagreement so those are present in there there's some subtle opinion here with conservative conservatives dedicated to the rule of law reject this approach and basically the implication there is saying if you are a true conservative this is how you will think so that's in there too and because this article if, especially if you read the full thing is laden with opinion we really should see somewhere on the story and we don't a word like this is an opinion this is a commentary any of those words that can be used to indicate it's somebody's opinion and we don't see that for this story so if we see where this got the orange zone and when you're looking for other sources and you see these types of things you are probably in an orange zone for a story so it goes beyond facts into presenting deep interpretation and it won't necessarily present the other side at all it's very one-sided you'll see as you start to read through the language of the story an opinion but the story itself won't necessarily be tagged as being a commentary or being somebody's opinion we saw the quotation marks again those can be used to indicate sarcasm or disagreement and then really with best practice if you have an opinion it's going to be labeled as such you should be able to have that honored and acknowledge that this is somebody's opinion the last example we're going to look at is from Otero's Red Zone. This specific example is from the Palmer Report and she classifies it as extremely biased and misleading and inaccurate. 
And if we take a look at some of the characteristics here from the snippet, if you were trying to determine if something was credible and good for seeking information on a story, we see here an unflattering picture. You might see that cartoon or images unflattering to a person. That can be an indication. This here is just a tiny snippet of the story. If you want to go and read the full story, you can go to this URL. If we're looking in this text, we see NBC News mentioned, but we don't see an actual link, which you will oftentimes see in a legitimate story, see a link to another story. And this is very subtle here, saying things like this. And that implies that it's an inference or it's a guess, but it's not an official quote. We don't have a verified quote. Um, we don't have a verified source. And if you read through this whole thing, it's making a lot of inferences and assumptions without backing those up or without being too in an informational tone. This is very interpretive. So if you were looking for a good informational source, but you saw a lot of inference in a story, uh, unverified quotes, it's probably not a story that you want to look at and use. So to recap, something in the red zone, we'll use words with a negative connotation. Part of the title of that article had the word obsession in it, which people generally use in a negative sense. It goes deep into interpretation and speculation when you're looking at a red zone story. You will encounter sometimes unflattering images. We have unverified quotes that were in there saying things using the word like. So again, not an official verified quote. And we don't see links for more information and just a lot of assuming throughout stories when you might be looking at a red zone story. Just because you are in an ECC library database does not mean that you can rest easy and skip evaluating your sources for bias. Here is the publication Mother Jones. This is a liberally leaning magazine that Otero classifies in her yellow zone, and it's available three different ways. You can find its stories out on Google. You can find its stories in our databases. And then we also have the Mother Jones magazine in print at the library. So in any of these locations, you're going to see the same slant and the same bias potentially occurring. So it's critical to evaluate your sources on an article by article basis, no matter where you find it. And it's important to look at how the information is presented, the language used to present that information, and how that information is packaged and put together with supporting things like other sources cited or images. The main message to take away is based on an acronym of BIAS. Be inquisitive of all sources. Take the time to really evaluate the content of your sources for bias and journalistic quality. This includes the traditional media, television, radio, magazines, newspapers, and it extends too into social media. You will be glad that you did this. You will be able to complete your assignments more easily, and you will also be a more informed citizen of society. As you have questions about evaluating media sources or anything else related to research, please get in touch with us. You can contact the Library Reference Desk in person in Building C, by phone or email, or even through text message with our chatting service. Happy searching!